this video, we'll describe many of the safety and troubleshooting issues that could potentially arise when using the module, such as safety with potassium hydroxide, cleaning the electrolyzers, power supply safety, rehydrating the fuel cell, and care of the fuel cell. The 2-molar potassium hydroxide used in the electrolyzer is a strong base and corrosive. It is harmful if swallowed and can cause severe eye and skin burns, as well as severe digestive and respiratory tract burns. Proper gloves and eye protection should be worn when either working with potassium hydroxide or using the electrolyzer. Potassium hydroxide is not compatible with polycarbonate plastic and should only be stored in compatible containers such as polypropylene, low-density polyethylene, high-density polyethylene, or glass. The potassium hydroxide can be left inside the electrolyzers for up to a week while you are running the experiments. When you are finished, you can either dispose of the electrolyte down the drain while flushing with plenty of water, or store the electrolyte in a suitable container for later use. After removing the electrolyte, be sure to thoroughly rinse the electrolyzers, gas supply tubes, and valves several times with water. Let them air dry before storing them. When you're ready to connect the power supply to the electrolyzer, do not first plug the power supply into your outlet. If you do this and the alligator clips are touching, the power supply will short circuit. Instead, first attach the red alligator clip to the red electrode on the electrolyzer, then attach the black alligator clip on the black electrode. Then you're ready to go ahead and plug your power supply into an outlet. Fuel cells operate best when they have a certain moisture content. Occasionally, you may have to rehydrate a fuel cell that has dried out. In order to do this, take the squeeze bottle that came with your kit and fill it full of distilled or deionized water. Do not use tap water. Insert the end of the squeeze bottle into one of the ports in the fuel cell and squeeze in a few drops of water. Shake the fuel cell around to distribute the water inside. Then, take the ear syringe and insert one of the ports on the fuel cell into the end of the ear syringe. Now squeeze the ear syringe to blow out any excess water. Now perform the same procedure on the other side of the fuel cell as well to rehydrate it. If you run the fuel cell for a long time, you may see some condensation or small water droplets on the inside of the fuel cell. This is normal, but the fuel cell may not perform well if it's too wet or flooded. If you suspect this has happened, use the ear syringe provided in the kit to blow out the excess water inside the fuel cell. Insert one of the ports into the end of the ear syringe and use it to blow out the excess water. Be sure to do this to both sides of the fuel cell as well. The most important thing to remember when using the fuel cells is to not get any of the potassium hydroxide from the electrolyzer inside the fuel cell. If this does happen, the fuel cell will be destroyed. This can happen when you allow the fuel cell to run for too long. As the fuel cell consumes the hydrogen gas, the level of potassium hydroxide in the electrolyzer increases. If left unattended, the potassium hydroxide can be drawn up into the gas supply tube and into the fuel cell. We recommend that you not let the level of potassium hydroxide rise above the zero mark on the electrolyzer. Also, we recommend that you disconnect both gas supply tubes from the fuel cell, so this cannot happen. Even if the electric motor is not connected to the fuel cell, the fuel cell will continue to consume hydrogen and oxygen gases to maintain its voltage. For more information about the curriculum, please visit CPUP's website or LabAIDS, our publisher, at the following addresses.